Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. This is the artist formerly known as Daryl Van Horn, James Mitchell, the Sinister Minister, and I'm here to let you know I would rather slam my cock in a car door than to miss the dulcet tones of Hard Body Harper, my illegitimate son on Booking the Territory podcast. <laughs> Oh, messy! This is professional wrestler Jimmy Vine, the Boogie Woogie Man. Tell my people, and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss booking the territory. Oh yeah! This is a one-man gang. You're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Booking the Territory, the Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast, where today we are covering WCW Saturday Night on TBS from October the 10th, 1992. If you're listening to this on YouTube, hit like and subscribe to the channel, and also make a comment or two. Those pesky algorithms like that sort of thing, and it helps the YouTube channel grow. It also makes Hopper very, very, very happy when you do that. And before I throw it to Hopper and Crockett and ask how they are doing, big time shout out to Disrespectfully Classy, Marky Blassie, Mike Childry, Joe Ice, and good old Justin. Thank you for your generous support on Patreon each and every month, and for being the largest sponsors of this show. Crockett! You're back this week, and uh, Doc won't be back next week. I got to find a fill in for you because Doc is God still going to be out. But uh, how are you, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> living. I'm, <laughs> yeah, the, wow. a very weak, a very weak Jimmy Jam impression this week because uh, that's the way I'm feeling right now. But uh, I'm doing all right. Um, yeah, I won't be able to to join you next week, and uh, the BTT Army rejoices. No, they don't. They really love you. They they really love you. You're like their favorite fill-in. Maybe I'll have to call on the Transformer Sparks or someone like that to uh, fill in with Hopper and I. But uh, you are you are a, a valuable member of the JV Goon Squad. That's for damn sure. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hopper, what's up? How are you? Uh oh. Oh God, no! We did not lose him just like that. He's he spent uh, he we had him on like uh, 10 minutes ago. He said, hey, and then dropped off. We got him back. He cursed out his laptop that you bought him. And now it's apparently it's happened again. All right. We're going to have to see where this goes tonight because he he is still showing on. And I'm going to make an assumption that he's. That it's just locked up or something because he said his Skype just dropped. Yep, oh, then he just drops. So yeah. um, that ain't good. I'm <laughs> almost wanting to tell him, and you ought to. This would be hilarious if this is what happened. With Harper, sometimes you got to like walk him through. Like, all right, uninstall Skype, reinstall. That is right. like trying to. Oof, um, it's like trying to teach an infant like you know algebra <laughs> trigonometry yeah yeah like it's just you, it's like talking to somebody who doesn't Dang. there he is hey, it did it again dude you know you know what you need to do what? i don't know if we're i don't know if we're gonna make it through the show tonight but here's here's what i'd recommend if it's so is skype just shutting down yeah it's like dude fuck off bro yeah so when i when i say shut down the call isn't dropping just the whole skype program is shutting down well, it just goes bromp and then it goes back to like the you know to the title screen. So, like yeah, my lo- first recommendation, did yeah. you say Crockett? It logs you off. Yeah. My recommendation, you're not gonna like this. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uninstall Skype and reinstall it. Bruh. <laughs> I'm not check for through. updates. Yeah. Right. I'm not going through that again. <laughs> <laughs> So or we're, we're gonna, gonna have, play this game all night. Yeah, Dude. we're we're gonna we're gonna try to do this at another time. We'll, we'll, I'll right. have to walk you through it because I think that's what. Well, like, I don't I don't want to say that's what the problem is because you just never know. But I, I just in my IT experience, and I'm not an IT person. That's the first thing I would do with a program, For, which is a pain in the ass. Something died in here. 
In your computer? No, in this fucking room, dude. What's it smell like? Like a dead animal. <laughs> Why don't you go find the animal and tell us what I, it I, is? I think it, that would right, be. It's got to be fucking in the wall, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, cause Saturday I fucking woke up and go to work, right? And I was like, man, it kind of smells rough. I was like, maybe I was just ripping them, right? So I, I was like, whatever. And then I come back and Tiffy was like, man, the room really stinks. And I was like, oh god. And I opened up the fucking bedroom door, dude, and it it it, it almost knocked me off my feet, bro. Like something is dead in here. And it's in the wall. It's got to be, bro, because I kind of looked around and looked under the bed and looked in all the dressers. In the, it's not in the closet because the closet, you know, it's this big walk-in closet and it smells fine. It's just, it's it's actual, like, in the bedroom, bro. And what if it's in the, um, in the air duct? Oh, fuck. I didn't think about it. Bro, this is like aliens. No, serious. Like... You know, if there's a big old rat that got in there and died, like, and it's yeah, just, fuck, you know, the, that, bro, the AC like, gets the... turned on and it just starts blowing that funk right on your ass. Oh, uh, you're an asshole. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that well, yeah, That could be it. If I open up the window just to crack, it, it, I mean, you don't smell it. But I closed it just now, but I'm like, God damn, it's still fucking, you can still smell a fucking hint of it. Or turn the AC on and stick your nose in that no, vent bro. and then see what comes out. Because I sniffed all like under the bed and the dressers and the pile of dirty clothes. It's, no, bro. <laughs> it's not there. Oh, what the, man. What the fuck, bro? Wow. <laughs> what do you call for that? Fucking nobody, bro. Exterminator? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? I mean, if, if you got a dead rat in the wall, I mean, what are you going to do? Right. Deep with it. It's eventually it'll decompose. Right. That's what I told <laughs> Tiffany. It's like just wait about three or four days until it, you know, until it turns into a skeleton. Give one of those I clean mean, plugins. <laughs> Dude, yeah, which <laughs> I, I don't think that's gonna work, bro. No, it's not gonna do it. Like that'll be just enough just to piss me off. <laughs> bro, I forgot. Oh, I remember one time when I was a kid. In the backyard, I found a, a fucking bird skull. I guess it was from a dead bird. And I thought I found a fucking fossil. I thought I found a fucking <laughs> dinosaur. And I ran in, in the house with it. And my mom's like, get that out of here. That's a bird. I was like, that's a dinosaur. That's a fucking <laughs> dead fucking bird. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I got a dead Mama. possum in my backyard a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah? Uh, in, the, in the spring, yeah. Apparently, it, 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 it like, sought cover in the winter and then just died. Yeah, I forgot. I didn't think they, uh, possums uh, go that far up north. Oh, yeah. They're all over the place, man. Oh. Yeah, that was a mess. Love fucking uh, all the um, what the maggots and all that stuff. Oh. But, uh, yeah, it was. In the backyard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it was. No Meanwhile, fun. Harper thought he found a a baby pterodactyl fossil. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I found a fucking dinosaur. I'm like, look at this. You could I mean, for, for that when you're like fucking eight years old, your fucking imagination bleeds whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. so, I thought I found a fucking dinosaur. I'm like, look at this shit on Chastain Street in Metairie. <laughs> I found a fucking dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well. Speaking of dinosaurs, uh, Crockett, you uh, you were hey. talking to me about the about the what's that? The Hall of Fame this year, the WWE Hall of Fame class so far as we record this. Uh, got any thoughts? Yeah, we got uh, four people so far. They announced Paul Heyman. They kicked it off with, which is I thought was kind of. I mean, I guess I know it's Philadelphia. It seems like an odd choice. Usually, you know, you, the the big the big name is what you lead off with when you announce the Hall of Fame and. I don't know if Paul Heyman's a big enough name to, I, I guess, are they not? The Hall of Fame now is just Damn the it. same crowd from SmackDown, right? Now. Fuck. Harper's yeah, yeah, room is thinking. Yeah, they do it after SmackDown on Friday so, night. So now. they don't have to sell tickets anymore. So, okay. So now, yeah. I yeah, they don't have to really push that like they used to. But, yeah, Paul Heyman, uh, Bull Meccano, 
Um, Muhammad Ali was just announced the other day, and uh, the U.S. Express, which was uh, a shocker for me and probably everyone else. Um, I mean, Heyman is, of course, deserving. Nakano was uh, a bright spot in the you know very small women's division in WWF in the early 90s. Muhammad Ali, I understand, you know, the the prestige of the name plus WrestleMania one. And then there's the US Express. I mean, my take on that is that it's basically a way to get Mike Rotunda in without putting in IRS. But what do you think, Mike? Yeah. And the funny part is WWE disrespected a lot of wrestlers in the eighties and nineties with these weird names, but like I think of Barry Windham. And I think of just the stupid gimmicks he had in WWF, you know, like, what was it? The stalker and the widow maker and the widow maker all, wasn't bad. I, don't know. I mean, it's bad after you see Barry test, you know, tear crap up and, and Crockett and the NWA and WCW. Like, that's what I, that's what I'm basing it off of when well, I like say to that. Them, no one ever was seen that before. Well, <laughs> no yeah, one of course. Right. No one, no Ric Flair. Who the fuck is that? But, but I will say this, like, I kind of, I dug the U.S. Express when they were a team, like back then. I, I kind of liked them, but at the end of the day, I mean, to me, Barry Windham was a whole lot better in the Crockett days uh, and and whatnot. But yeah, I guess that's the way to get Rotunda in there. But I'll give them a pass. Look, they have worse. I don't even say worse people. Like I think they're both worthy, but. I always say this too about the WWE Hall of Fame, and we've talked about it over the years here, Crockett. It's it's not real. Like you look at some of the people they do have in there, it's like, okay, this is not a brick and mortar Hall of Fame. This is this was at one time just Vince's version of a quote unquote sports entertainment Hall of Fame. Uh, so I could see what you're saying by like it's it's a weird it's it's a weird team when you think about it because I mean as we've always talked about there's also no Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express in there so I I think they are deserving of any wrestling Hall of Fame um, but Heyman deserves it for sure and I guess they announced that because it was Philly I don't know I haven't read a ton yeah. about it but he definitely well, you know, deserves it well you know uh, Hogan's music was supposed to really be theirs yeah for the U.S. Express yeah they used, yeah they, yeah, yeah. But they kind of bailed out right before they were. Yeah. Did they use it at all? I don't think they did. I don't, if they did, it was very short. Yeah. Yeah, right. It was very short and it wasn't uh, maybe never made TV or it was just a local, you know, house show type stuff. And, yeah. and uh, meanwhile, Demolition's not in. Yeah. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like never, I said, there's their Hall of Fame has a lot of flaws. If you want to call it a Hall of Fame, yeah, it's just. I guess one day they'll have like an actual, kind of like their version of like Canon, Ohio, huh? You think? Actual, I mean, they like, got Ohio. enough. Yeah, they got enough resources to certainly do it. It's just one of those things where, again, it's it's a Hall of Fame in name at this point because it's not really a brick and mortar building. But they certainly could have one if they wanted one. It has to be in New York, wouldn't you think? It's got to be. Connecticut. Connecticut. No, dude. I think it would be in fucking New York. I mean, that, I, I heard rumors like way back when like on you know, Universal City Walk or whatever. They'll find some place for it. They've teased it before. I don't know if it's going to be in Connecticut or New York because all their operations are basically out of that performance center. So probably... I would I would think it'd be something down there. Well, that's true too. I mean, you could do it in. I oh, mean, if you're playing, Florida. yeah. If you're yeah. playing, if you're gonna play the uh, uh, benefit from better tax laws for businesses. Oh yeah. I think, I think you'd go to Florida uh, yeah. for something like that. Um, Texas is very friendly to business taxes because they ram us up the ass with our personal <laughs> property taxes. Uh, but they wouldn't do it in Texas. I'm just that was just me uh, getting a dig in on the wonderful state of Texas that ramps us up the ass with property taxes. Well, uh, I but yeah, the fucking smell, bro. What? Oh. Where is it? When I opened the window, I was like, "Bam! There it is, dude." 
her it's pile a- of fucking clothes that I am not touching, bro. Wait, wait, wait. A pile of clothes? Well, we, well, you know, I got my little basket with my dirty clothes, right? Okay. Uh-huh. And she has one too. And it's it's in that area. And there's a dead animal in somewhere. Something, in that basket. bro. I'm scared. <laughs> Harper's like, <I'm, laughs> listen, Harper's <laughs> supposed to be the man of the house, and he's like, I'm not touching it. I'm letting her deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have one of those like things from like aliens. It beeps, beeps, and the dot gets closer and closer to me. <laughs> Fantastic! Oh man, move out the hallway or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's fantastic. Oh my god, living the dream, brother. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Well. Uh. Crockett, any other thoughts on the Hall of Fame? No, I think that's it. I think, there's, I think they need some sort of major wrestling star. I don't know who's left, but um, I think they need something more. Something, somebody, like there's no major current or recent wrestling star going in yet. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I mean wouldn't, you cons- wouldn't you consider Heyman like the headliner at this point? Oh, yeah. yeah maybe maybe still, that's not- who they're thinking of. I guess he's he's not a wrestler. I don't know. What about Shane Douglas? <laughs> in that area, huh? They could put a uh, hitman there. Um, just dress him up like he's dressed up in Saturday Night on '92. What we're doing, right? That we can be a country <laughs> music star. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, well, I mean, we still got. Look, we're recording this on March 12th, so I mean, there's still several weeks to go of them to announce others if they are going to announce more. So I guess we'll see. But. Yeah, at this point, I mean, Heyman is the, the... The one thing I've seen speculated is like, well, who inducts Heyman? Mm, uh, would it be CM Punk? I mean, I don't know who it is, but there's so many people that could do it. Well, would it be I, great I, if, if, I don't if know. Cornette did it? <laughs> that, that ain't gonna happen but that would be funny that would be a surprise <laughs> yeah that would that would be a surprise I mean he's inducted someone but he's you know he inducted the rock and roll but yeah you know that would be he, Cornette's a hell of a speaker so that would go over well but I don't know man <laughs> Doc is always telling me about how uh, you know I kind of I don't make fun of Heyman but every time I see Heyman on TV these days I'm like man he needs to lose weight you know, I don't want the man to peel over and die like or anything, man. It's like he's just so out of shape. And Doc, Doc's like, you ought to hear what Corny says about him. Corny oh, yeah. calls him a walrus and a buffalo, and <laughs> he's like calling him all all sort of names. So, um, yeah, I, I saw there's a there's a T-shirt online, a Paul Heyman Hall of Fame T-shirt, just with his like mug on the front, looking like freaking <laughs> the penguin, just unbelievable. <laughs> He, like, who's gonna buy that shirt? His, like, I, I've been watching SmackDown a lot, and his facial expressions are priceless. Like, he's so damn good, so damn good. I mean, even beyond the promos, just he he scores without the ball. Like, he's just standing there, and then he makes these faces when he's terrified. He's so great. Just always has been, though. I mean, even back during this era, he's he's great. So. Um, but yeah, real quick, before we get too much further in and we start, uh, the review portion, remember if you submit a five-star review on Apple podcasts and podcast attic, I will read it on air. Uh, those five-star reviews that is. So please submit one on Apple podcasts or podcast attic. And then one new patron this week, Bill B. Thanks for signing up and becoming an annual patron. Greatly appreciated. And if you want to be like Bill and you want to get Halloween havoc coming up in a few weeks, uh, Halloween Havoc 92, that is. We're already in 92 for uh, getting to the end of 92. Go to tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. That is tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. A great way to support the show and get tons of extra content. Over 400 Patreon exclusive shows are available there on Patreon. Uh, I am going to... Crockett, you got anything else before we jump into the episode? I'm going to share my screen and then I'm going to start the video version of the show. But anything else, anything else before we get into October the 10th? Now let's get into it. All right. Well, this show is joined in progress in 
This is the first half of the taping that took place on October the 5th of 1992. So they taped this a few days before. Some additional notes from the history of WWE.com is this. Prior to the taping, WCW um, TV champion Scott Steiner had a backstage argument with Bill Watts, resulting in Steiner being taken off of all the booking sheets for the immediate future. And also for the record, just so we're aware, Scott does work in Japan a couple of times in November and there will be footage of him shown next year on Saturday night with him in action. But based on my records that I was able to look up, he doesn't do any more WCW TV tapings or shows in the States at this point. He's basically done Um, again, although we'll see tape footage of him, but he is pretty much done. So to that, I say, good job, Bill Watts. You're running off not only Scott Steiner, but one of your money tag teams. What a goof (laughs) Bill Watts can be. I just don't get it running off a top flight tag team like this. You treat Arn and Bobby bad and you're like, nope, got nothing. Now, I'm sure there's two sides to it. You know, Scott Steiner may have threatened to kill him and do something else. Who knows what the argument was about, but uh, yeah, they're done. Well, he's done and contract is coming due soon as well or be over soon. So there's that. Um, Any thoughts on what I just said, Crockett or Harper? No. Yeah, I think they think they um, were asked to take a pay cut too. Oh, fuck that. That was part of it. That's in line with everyone during this era though. Like, right. There's nobody who's not being asked to take a cut and pay. Matter of fact, we're going to get into it. How much? They don't say. Well, like everyone, everyone that he's they're offering seven fifty a week and two hundred fifty in bonuses. So that's a grand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Arn. Well, no. Well, seven fifty a week would would total up to about. 3000 a month. Yeah. But Arn specifically said when he talks about the era, uh, his pay was cut in half. Damn. That's fucking rough. <laughs> Can you imagine? And then in Arn's case, like he would, he said, he's like, look, I already just came from WWF. Right, like, what yeah. do you, like, yeah. he's like, I already burned a bridge. Like what, you know, I've got no leverage. Like, so what am I supposed to do? And we'll, right. we're, I'm gonna we're gonna talk about that. Uh, what Arn eventually does uh, at a later date uh, in an angle he does with Eric Watts and how he Arn was pretty smart. Let me just leave it at that. Uh, I mean, yeah. But, I mean, he's got a wife and kids too. Yeah. He can't just be like corny and say go fuck yourself. Right. Well, and Crockett, I didn't realize it was that low. Like. Seven fifty a week. Oh, who? I mean, are you? I don't know are if that's spe- specifically for the stock. I, I saw that somewhere. I don't, okay. I'm trying to find it now, and I don't see it. I don't well, know if that was specifically for the Steiners or just that was the stop. general what they were offering people. They would get bonus if they worked a certain amount of dates in a month. I, I read whether it was five hundred for the month or a thousand. I can't remember the dollar amount, but it was like if you. If you wrestled 20 times in a month, something like that, they, I think some of them would get bonus in that way, uh, which you could get to 20 relatively easy. I would think, I mean, that's just, you know, 20 days out of a month. You got 30 days in most days, um, 30 days. I mean, what about the contracts though? Yeah. So they're going through this. I'm going to just call it like a, the, the Watts great awakening here. Like, so as contracts are coming due, People are being asked to take pay cuts, and damn, dude, this is not a lot of happy campers. And I don't, you know, I've never seen all the contracts during this era. I don't know if guys were really that overpaid as much as the the business just wasn't bringing in the money it had in the past. Like it's easy for us to say, "Come on, just pay Arn. Come on, just pay Bobby. Come on, just pay the Steiners." But if the balance sheet is in the red. Like, you know, we're being critical, but, you know, if we ran a business and the balance sheet was in the red, too, we'd probably be trying to look where we could 
make some cuts as well. So it's uh, it's kind of that man. Just sell the Braves. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the whole it. reason Watts is there is to is to cut costs. That's his yeah, whole... which is which is unfair. It, the, he gets paid. I've, he gets paid more for like how much money he saves them, right? So it's like that's what he's doing. He's trying to make money by taking away their money, basically. That's Bro. what some people claim. But, but that's like a cop. It's like the more tickets you write, the more you get paid. Yeah. Right. You're incentivizing the wrong thing. Right. Because at that point, your job isn't to, you you know, your job is to, in the, in the instance of the cop, is to, you know, make sure nobody's breaking the law. But you just, just take business into your own hands and you're like, well, if you're going to pay me an extra 50 bucks every ticket I write, and I'm only making 50000 a year, I'll make sure I write 10 tickets a day. Yeah. I'll make extra five hundred, you know, five hundred bucks a day. It's like, whoa, hold on, you know, cowboy, ain't nobody saying all that. So it's just, it's just that you're incentivizing someone to do the wrong thing in that that instance, and I, that that was always my feeling about Watts. But again, and here's here's the part of it. I, I think I've said this before. It's not just one wrestler. Like, there's a lot of wrestlers complaining at this time. So, you know, if you if you got ten guys complaining about the same thing. It might be that thing that's the problem and not the 10 guys. Yeah. Uh, I found it here. I found uh, the details of the Steiners. Uh, apparently, the money offered on a two-year deal, which is the 750 base pay and 250 bonus pay per night, and Watts is willing to guarantee a minimum of, of uh, 250 dates per year. So the contract in writing guarantees 187500 uh pending four successful performance reviews. is basically a... Two thousand two hundred fifty thousand dollar deal, and it's a cut from the estimated three hundred thousand they made. Damn! So they were being asked to, yeah, they were being asked a fifty thousand dollar pay cut. I mean, that's a lot of money. I mean, look, they were making a lot of money. One, you know, one eighty something is still a lot of money in ninety three, ninety two. But I mean, well, I'll take that tomorrow. I'll take that right. two seconds from now. <laughs> For real. But if it is a fifty thousand dollar pay cut again, Arn. I think Arn said like his pay was cut in half. That's fucked up. Yeah. Well, on with the show. They do join the show in progress, and Crockett and I did some research. We're not sure what cut into it. The Braves did play the Pirates in Game Four of the NLCS that day, going up three to that, one. Boy. Ooh, that was good shit, dude. Right, it was. <laughs> bro, Sid Brain, bro, sliding in. That was a, that was a hell of a series. But, uh, but this did not air. Bro, bro, had like a batting average of like two fucking ten. He just steps up and bam, and he hits the fucking single. And comes <laughs> Sid Bream slide in, bro. That shit was like fucking watching Major League or something. It was good stuff. I remember that series really, really well. Mm-hmm. It wasn't on TBS, though. And no, it was on that CBS. game was on CBS. So Crockett and I don't know why the first few minutes of this show were cut off. And uh, if you know, you can DM Harper. But here's the thing. I can tell you that one important thing we missed when it was when the intro was cut off was that they announced there would be two refs for the Rick Rude and Masahiro Chono match at Halloween Havoc. And then there was a sting match against an enhancement talent that cut off. And then from there, we see the Arn Anderson Bobby Eaton match versus Dave Diamond and Pez Watley that we saw the last minute or two of. Really, really minute at that. But Crockett, you spent like six hours today trying to find out what what cut off the first part of the show. Right, yeah. It, it wasn't Braves. It wasn't the Hawks. They didn't start till November 2nd, I believe. Uh, it wasn't NASCAR. So, yeah, I was just spinning my wheels, literally, uh, just trying to figure out what this was. I wanted to bring this to the show, but I failed you. I have nothing. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. Come on. Come on. I mean... Can we do a little bit better next time you're uh, standing in for Doc, please? Yeah, I know. Get Sparks in here next week. <laughs> well, so that's what happened. And, uh, yeah, we don't, we didn't really miss too much outside of the two ref announcement uh, for Halloween Havoc with Rude and Chono. From there, we are going to go to a Bill Watts promo. Um, let's hear from Bill Watts and see what uh, the uh, tyrant, uh, the tyrannical boss himself has to say. Here it is. That match. Just what do we mean by that designation? How did it all get started? In the late 60s and early 70s, probably the most innovative and progressive promotion. 
just real quick, he's talking about a lights out match. That's the part that got cut off at the very beginning. So I'll, I'll hit continue. Motor in wrestling was Eddie Graham of Florida. He was one of the staunch supporters of the National Wrestling Alliance and a member of its board of directors. As the oldest and most prestigious wrestling association, its members were very conservative in that era. And their events were considered as sanctioned by the NWA. As with every type of event that competed for the entertainment dollar, participants were always pushing the parameters to accelerate the excitement level. Athletic creativity and intense personal rivalries sought newer and more potentially dangerous concepts to culminate their showdowns. From cage matches, then in Texas was born the Texas Death Match, then Boris Malenko created the Russian Chain Match, then Dusty Rhodes invented the Bull Rope Match, in Tennessee someone invented the Coal Miner's Glove Match, the Scaffold Match, and somewhere else the First Blood Match. Each of these new events more exciting and more dangerous. The NWA as a body did not want to officially be a party to or to sanction these type of matches. Thus Eddie Graham devised the Lights Out Match, which very simply is this. No, the match is not wrestled in the dark. It was just a symbolic turning off momentarily of the arena lights at the end of the officially sanctioned card to signify the end of that card and to immediately turn the lights back on and have the unofficial or unsanctioned bout, thus the term lights out match. Now with Jake the Snake versus Sting, again we have new parameters. All of the most dangerous of these type of bouts, plus one not even revealed called the spinner's choice, have been placed upon a wheel of chance and called spin the wheel, make the deal. Because of this, WCW has designated it a lights out match, a match not sanctioned by WCW. Because of the spinner's choice possibility, we're going one step further. We are having Jake the Snake and Sting sign a waiver absolving WCW of any liability. They assume all responsibility. They spin the wheel and make the deal. All right. So I thought actually, look, we called it down the middle here. I thought Watts was really good there explaining the history of a lights out match and the guys need to sign a waiver and all that good stuff. Crockett, do you have thoughts? No. Yeah. I mean, maybe a little slightly long winded, but yeah, I'm glad uh, that's the last we're going to hear of Bill Watts tonight. <laughs> right. That's that's nice. Uh, Harvey, you got any thoughts before I play the next clip? I, I stopped listening when he, uh, when I heard conservative. <laughs> oh my just, god why He's would you over. trigger somebody man you and doc are the worst <laughs> you all know what y'all are doing <laughs> jesus why do y'all do that my inbox um, lights up even I when i say americans as it's I a sit in joke. my kitchen i'm a mother of <laughs> we hear you <laughs> It was like when Doc... Immigrants come in and they kill that Oh, come on, Harper. I'm in my kitchen and I'm not cooking anything. I'm just sitting here. (laughs) Remember when when Ron Simmons won the title and Doc said, yeah, we got to get some DEI action in here. Jesus Christ, my email inbox was full (laughs) of people you tell that motherfucker i'm like can you people not take a joke he does it you people he does it the highly offended crowd oh which is like like it's actually a small amount of people but it's they're the most vocal i'm like he's had I, I even said it when he said that statement. I go, you know, he's just trying to trigger y'all. And sure enough, he triggered him. Oh. You tell that some bitch that B E I is. Wait, why is that st- the accent you use? Because that's how I read it coming from the person. Like, God damn, <laughs> son of a bitch. You tell that son of a bitch. If you don't like it, he can leave. <laughs> Love it or leave it. Don't run. <laughs> oh my god. Well, <laughs> let's go now to another clip from Watts and Jim Ross. Wait, what? And, <laughs> uh you know, Watts likes to hear himself talk, so here it is. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Ross back with Cowboy Bill Watts here on WCW Saturday night. In just a few moments, we'll have the contract signing of a rather unique situation involving Jake the Snake Roberts, who is joining us. We expect Sting to be joining us momentarily as well, Bill Watts. Well, that's right. Of course, we've explained our position on this lights-out match. This spin the wheel, make the deal. 
that we want them both to sign a contract absolving WCW from any liability for this match. The Stinger making his way here to our area. And Bill, at this point, I think I'll turn the festivities over to you. I think the contract's rather self-explanatory. Well, it certainly is. Again, both of you understand. You've pushed the parameters. You've come up with a concept. You have an issue you want to settle. There's all these different matches, plus there's one match that you have yet to reveal the stipulations, the spinner's choice. So therefore, we're telling you that you have to both sign this waiver of liability. You're releasing WCW and everybody else from any liability for anything that happens and spin the wheel, make the deal at Halloween Havoc. Anybody have any questions or comments re regarding this situation, Sting? I have absolutely no problems with signing a waiver, and I have no problems with any of the matches on the wheel. Remember something, Jake, the wheel spins for both of us, not just one of us. Get ready, Sting. Get really ready. Because you have no idea what you're stepping into. You look at that one, and what does it tell you? What does it tell you? Spinner's choice. Doesn't that create a little doubt in your mind? Doesn't it? It should. I got no problems with any mystery matches, whatever you have, it doesn't matter to me. And by the way, Jake, you better concentrate on one thing. Don't let your mouth override your butt, pal. Think about that. You're the one that should be thinking at this point, maybe. All right. Well, what would you guys sign the waiver? And what they're talking about, of course, is the Spinner's Choice match is a match that Jake Roberts has devised that's put under the Spinner's Choice. And if, if when the wheel spins, it comes up on Spinner's Choice, then Sting has to wrestle him in that kind of match. And since none of that's been revealed at this time, we want the waiver absolving us from any liability. And that's what they're signing now. All right, so they go ahead and sign it. Nothing else happens. And I kept the, thinking in my, at, while I'm watching, it's like, I thought something was going to happen, but nothing happened. There's a table out there, so I was waiting for somebody to fall through it or something. I don't know. Uh, Crockett, your thoughts? Seems like they're really tipping their hand with the spinner's choice thing, aren't they? Just a bit? Like they're just talking about it so much. I mean, that's got to be what happens, right? I think so. I yeah, think so. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason it could be anything else, right? They're they're teasing the hell out of this spinner's choice. I like the two snakes on the side of it. It looks like something from like a, a fucking He Man display from, from Toys sure. R Us for the eighties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the all new Snake Mountain. This Christmas. I don't that see was the bad. snakes. They're right here. You see it to the right of Sting? Or you see, it was right next to Sting. You didn't see it? No. You could see it. You could see it real good when Jake comes out. You see it? There it is. Oh, okay. Now I see. Okay. Okay. It's on the ground. Okay. Yeah, it's on the ground. What do you think that thing's made out of? Styrofoam. Foam. Foam. Probably. Yeah. Plaster. Wow. Something. Something very light. Still, uh, hanging around the wheel. You think it's in some? Uh, well, they should have that on at fucking WWE Treasures. They gotta find the wheel. <laughs> from Halloween Havoc '92. <laughs> Uh, it makes me wonder where it's at as you say that <laughs> oh god they probably chunked that shit in a dumpster that fucking night right when it was <laughs> probably <laughs> for real all right all right well uh any other thoughts crockett or hopper on that long signing segment no no we go to shane douglas and robbie walker Versus Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker and Pat Rose in a little tag team action here. Uh, Crockett, I guess I'll throw to you. Any thoughts on this match? I'm uh, very honored to be here for the debut of Hard Work Bobby Walker. Yeah. When he Just was that, Robbie. But, when he um, was Robbie, yep. I don't understand like these WCW always at the random tag team matches, the random pairings. It always happens, and I don't. Why not give the guy a singles win? Why is he in a tag team with Shane Douglas, who they're pushing as like a, you know, a guy possibly going for the U S title. He was talking about the U S title last week or the week before. Like what, why is he doing a tag? I don't understand. Yeah. It's Help almost me out. like when you would play the, the fucking video game, it'll just be like Randall, like hacksaw Jim Duggan and, and 
Honky Tonk Man versus <laughs> Ultimate Warrior and Jake Roberts. WrestleFest, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. WrestleFest. <laughs> Earthquake and Jake the Snake tag team. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why is this random pairing for the guy's debut? Why not give him something to let him shine on his own? Yeah. So I guess when they, when they started first giving Shane the push, maybe the goal was the singles title. But as I watch this and as you ask that, I'm thinking, wait, whatever happened with, you know, a lot of guys leaving Steiners, Jake eventually being out the door. Spoiler alert. Sorry about that. Yeah. Williams and Gordy. They, Williams and Gordy are, you know, are essentially, well, Williams will be here for a little bit. Gordy's done. They, this must've been the moment where, Watts was like, well, damn, I know I was thinking about, you know, taking Shane and having singles title of some sort, but damn it, I need a tag team. And, you know, spoiler alert, it's going to be him and Steamboat as a tag team. So maybe that's why they threw him in this random tag match. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, it goes like it goes to the point you're saying, Crockett, about how random it is. Now that wouldn't make much sense. Cause it's like, well, why not just tag him with steamboat? But I do kind of see what you're saying, but just, I mean, I just named five guys essentially where four of them being tag team guys that are now going to be out the picture. So, you know, I guess they're getting Shane ready now for tag team. I don't know. I mean, to call audible, bro. well, yeah. And when you got a tyrant like Bill Watts causing problems, you're going to be doing a lot of audible and, it was like Peyton Manning, Omaha, Omaha. <laughs> Bro, there's a whole lot of Omaha and going on in, in WCW <laughs> in his era. Whole lot of Omaha. And so, yeah. Um, but you're right. Hard work, Bobby Walker. Uh, I didn't remember him during this time. No, I think I think he comes in as Robbie Walker, then, then is gone for mm-hmm. a moment and then comes back as Bobby. Yep. As, as Bobby? Yeah, he goes from Robbie the, to Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You don't remember him during like the Monday Night era um, on Nitro uh, Hopper? Uh, he would he would do some undercar matches. Um, so yeah, Robbie Walker, but the, he will be known as Hard Work Bobby Walker uh, in the future. But uh, yeah, I don't remember him being around a long time right here. But I can't. Uh, it's been a while. So anyway. Um, We're going to end up with all four guys in the ring. Douglas is going to catch Rose with a belly to belly and Douglas and Walker win by pin. And that was that Crockett. Any other thoughts from this one? No, we're going to see uh, another random tag team debut later on. But uh, yeah, this one was, it was fine. That's about it. I'm I'm telling you, man, they, they're, they're calling audibles, dude, because I, yeah, it makes sense what you're saying that they're losing losing talent left and right, especially tag teams, and they need to find something that sticks. Yeah, yeah, just Steiner's done, Gordy and Doc pretty much done. I mean, like you got to do something, and that that's the only thing I can figure. From there, I'm not going to play the audio from this segment, but from there we go to a Cactus Jack and Barbarian training segment. We saw one last week. We're going to see one again this week, and they're actually um, in like the warehouse or the training facility. And I want you to see something as I fast forward uh, this thing. Did you notice Crockett when Barbarian is slamming people and Harper pay, pay close attention when Barbarian is being slammed. That was Sergeant buddy Lee Parker. I can't tell who that guy is that just slammed him. Here's another guy who slams him. These are like probably trainees. Look at who that last guy is. That oh, slams Barbarian. That's, uh, is that ice train? That is ice train. Yep. That's what I thought um, when I saw. I wasn't sure. Yep. That is the first sight of Ice Train, I guess, technically in a WCW ring uh, yeah. that, I, that I can remember. But that is definitely Ice Train, uh, who unfortunately like passed away. Morton. Me too. Fire, Fire and Ice. And ice. Yeah. Dude, they were badass, man. Mm-hmm. Like, if you, if you, you could have seen those two in, like, like 1989, 1990. Like just oh, yeah, tossing dude. people around like the Steiners. I mean, they 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 would have been a team to be reckoned with. Yeah. But yep, that was the uh, first time we've seen Ice Train on uh, WCW TV. So there you go. 
All right. From there, we go to Marcus Bagwell versus Paul Lee. Uh, I guess I'll throw it to you, Crockett. It's not a terribly long match, but any thoughts on Bagwell versus Nature Boy Paul Lee, who is just a funny-looking fellow if there's ever been one? Yeah, with the bargain basement <laughs> for Claire <laughs> robe there. Look at this dude. <laughs> That's like Auburn. a trailer park, Ric Flair, dude. That <laughs> robe. I bet he listens to the Oak Ridge Boys. Oh, 100%. <laughs> What's that robe smell like, Hopper? Man, cigarettes. <laughs> spill fucking beer. <laughs> Your girl's laundry basket. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, hey. You know, I'm glad the Cowboys are winning again. I think they're going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Gotta love it. Nature boy, Paul Lee. Um, dollar Store Ric Flair here versus Bagwell. Any other thoughts, Crockett, before I go to the finish of this one? Not much no, there's not much to it. Yeah. Yeah, Bagwell actually hits a perfect plex, and he's going to pin Paul Lee as we will watch right here. In a second. It's coming up. And uh, one, two, three. It's over. Um, I didn't really think too much of this, but, you know, I guess you give Bagwell a win here and no harm, no foul. We then get a replay of last week from Barry Windham and and um, Dustin Rhodes winning the tag titles out of the blue. So remember this because this really did come out of nowhere. So it's important to, to just remember this Win just comes out of nowhere. These guys are, you know, now a team to be reckoned with. So just wanted to say that. And then uh, after the replay, we get a promo from WCW main event. We got Austin and Pillman. They're out there with Jim Ross. And we have Dustin Rhodes and Barry Windham as well. Uh, kind of, I guess they're confronting each other. Here it is. Oh, you're right. Boy, that was impressive, Dustin Barry. We got to take our hats off to you. But I know you guys don't want to be paper champions. I know you're not going to sit on this title. So why don't you put the world titles up against Stunning Steve and Flying Brian next Saturday night? Well, Brian Pillman, I don't like your change of attitude, Pelly. So you want these belts next Saturday night? This Saturday night, hey, we'll be there. You be there. All right, did you see the the look Barry shot at Dustin when he accepted? I did I did miss that actually, yeah. At the end of it, when Dustin says, All right, we accepted this Saturday night. And when he says it, Dustin's like, or uh, Barry's like, What? He kind of looks at him like, Are you serious? What what's that about? So again, it's like last week they called an audible to get the belt on them and this week, right away, we're calling another audible where it's like, oh, we're going to stir up some dissension between these two. It's like you could tell it was just fly by night on the spot. Like, we got to do something. And, we, you know, these, we're hemorrhaging talent. So let's figure out what we're going to do with these belts and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, uh, yeah, just a lot of <laughs> attitude changes overnight. Yeah. All right. From there, we do go to the Halloween Havoc Control Center. There's a Jake Roberts interview. Jake talks about a uh, barbed wire being a great match to have at spin the wheel, make the deal. He hopes it's barbed wire. Then they cut to a promo for Ron Simmons discussing his match with the barbarian. Then they cut to Rick rude talking about his match with Chono and roots it. Rude gets to choose one of the refs and who that will be. He says, you'll have to see on the 25th who he chooses. And then Ross then says there will be a rematch for the WCW world tag belts. But there won't be because Gordy won't be there. So there's that. Any thoughts on the control center and any of the promos, the quick promos that they played Crockett? Because they were very quick. No, it kind of makes me feel like you were correct that um, last week's was supposed to air this week. Last week's um, uh, control center was supposed to air this week. But um, yeah, something happened. (laughs) <laughs> we got that major snafu last week with where they announced the title change before it happened. Whoops. Yeah, it happens. Whoops. Hey, Faye, brother. <laughs> All right. So from there, uh, we're moving quickly, but we go to another 
promo. There's a lot of promos in this one, which I, I don't mind at all. I, I prefer the shit talk, and it's just that these promos are a little bit subdued this week, it seems. We got another promo. Right now we're back at center stage with Brian Pillman and Steve Austin, and they are with Jim Ross. Let's hear what they have to say, talking about the match that should be later tonight. CW 79 later in the program is scheduled to be the new tag team champions Barry Windham and Dustin Rhodes in a non-title event against stunning Steve Austin and Flying Brian. What are your, your comments about the non-title status? We couldn't be more ecstatic. Sure, it's not a title match, but it's the next best thing. It's an opportunity, an opportunity for stunning Steve and Flying Brian to show Barry and Dustin, the WCW executive committee, and the wrestling world that were both destined for greatness. And I can't think of a quicker way to cut through the bureaucratic red tape and get that title shot than to come out here live and in Technicolor on national TV and dominate Barry and Dustin from pillar to post and beat them one, two, three. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that mass schedule will come later in the program. Now let's go back up to Rhubar. I don't like that as non-title. What about you, Crockett? Well, yeah, you never like if it's non title. But I, I think it's an interesting choice that we've seen two promos with Austin and Pillman and Austin hasn't said a word. I I remember it being like that not often but enough. I mean, I know at the beginning Austin has said himself and I've I've read that Austin was not uh, happy to be in this role at the, at the beginning. Right. He didn't because... he didn't want to do this with Pillman. Right. Yeah, I heard the same. Yeah. Um, I forget if I forget if he says Dusty had told him he was going to get a run with the U.S. title or something at this point. Right. Yeah, that's what he told him. Yeah, and well, that got pulled from under him, and he ends up with Pillman. Which I mean, they were great together, but I could see why he wasn't, you know, happy after being told he was going to get a run with the U.S. title. Yeah, at this point, it just seems to be like, yeah, you take the you take the mic, brother. Right. Yeah. yeah, a little disgruntled. But he was, I think his initial contract, he said he was making 75 a year. But yeah. he's he's Look, a year in. That, at, bro. Right. Yeah, he's, he's over a year in at this point, though, too. Mm. All right, so then from there, we go to Scotty Flamingo versus the Z-Man. <sighs> Can I take a nap while you talk about this, Crockett? Here it comes, comes off the ropes, hip toss. There he is, doing a <laughs> strut like no one can, Mr. Flamingo. You talking about Levy here or what? <laughs> Levy? You go to high school with him? Oh, oh fuck. Yeah, this, these two, <laughs> nothing happening, guys. They took the light heavyweight division away, so Scotty Flamingo is languishing. Z-Man doesn't have his tag partner of the week, so he's just uh <laughs> existing uh, and <laughs> they give these guys 12 fucking minutes and neither of them have anything going on no ramifications for <laughs> halloween havoc or anything and it's just fucking oh my god it's on bar city for one uh, and <laughs> just oh like by the way like every match at this point has had like arm work watch the monitor and figure out what everyone else is doing and do something else please but uh, yeah this I have a timestamp at 37.45. I don't know if you have anything before that. Uh, No, let me go to it and see what, what you got. So hold on one second. I'm at 37.37 now. What are we looking for here? I thought it was like a, a unique double down. It wasn't like the standard. It's coming back, hitting the ropes. And they're just kind of. Oh, bonkets. yeah. That's a little, little different. That's Aaron Anderson uh, double down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did like that. Yeah, I've seen Arn Anderson do that quite a few times. Yeah, that like was. A, yeah, like a minute later, there's like a, a miscommunication in the corner. Uh, Thirty-eight fifty-five. Um, someone whips one guy whips the other one into the corner, and they don't know that they're waiting for something to happen, and nothing <laughs> happens. Yeah, watch <laughs> this. I think I had this too. <laughs> What? <laughs> you can tell something was off because yeah. like he, no like the way z-man z-man irish whips from corner to corner and then the way he runs in it's like he's waiting for something that never happens he's waiting for a boot or an elbow yeah yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. I felt bad. Look, I felt bad for both of these guys because, like, it's just nothing there. It's no other way to say it. But Z-Man is going to go to the top rope, and he's going to hit the missile drop kick, and he's going to beat Flamingo. And my note was wrong guy won. And uh, Mr. No Personality beats Levy. I'm sorry, Flamingo. Levy, what you go to high school with him up? So, yeah, I I got nothing. Yeah, Any other thoughts? We've already spoken way too much about it. Yeah, we really have. But I tell you what, I do have a lot. For, well, I don't say a lot, but I, I think we've been a little hard on this dude that we're about to go to a promo of, but we, we got to give it a listen because it is Eric Watts. And um, yeah, let's, let's get a little bit about his backstory and all that good stuff. Cause I think, I think the intent here was good. Here it is. Giovanni who goes up close with rookie Eric Watts. With us this week on WCW Up Close is Eric Watts, one of the new young superstars in World Championship Wrestling. Eric comes to us with a great athletic background, high school wrestler, went on to play college football, University of Louisville as quarterback. And during the offseason, we understand Eric spent a lot of time with the young people uh, volunteering as a uh, coach of amateur wrestling as well. So wrestling was always in your blood, Eric. But, you know, like many of the young uh, athletes we have in World Championship Wrestling, you followed in your father's footsteps. So I'm a Dustin Rhodes with Dusty Rhodes, Brad Armstrong with Bob Armstrong, even go back to the to the Funks, uh, Terry and Dory Funk uh, with their father, Dory Funk Sr. So wrestling was always in your blood, but being the son of Cowboy Bill Watts, and, and just like all the other wrestlers, you feel there's a lot of pressure on you? <laughs> it's funny you ask that. I've been asked that all through my amateur background. No, I don't feel pressure because I don't try to live up to my father's expectations or anyone else's expectations. What I try to do is I set my own personal goals. That's, my, that's the only pressure I feel is internal, to be the best I could be to be the best at whatever I'm participating in, whether ac- academically, athletically, and just like pro wrestling, I'm gonna try to be the best Eric Watts can be, and let that say enough. Your first televised match, I was on hand, uh, and how did it feel for you? First time after training uh, so hard to get into the pro ranks, walking through the crowd, a great crowd on hand. Describe that feeling for us. Yeah, I mean, it was unreal. I mean, emotionally, the adrenaline was just skyrocketing. It was like going out in front of Ohio State in front of 95,000 fans, a sellout crowd. Except for TV, you don't know how many million people are watching you. Um, I don't know if I was nervous. I was anxious, and uh, anxious to get my first win, and that's exactly what I went out and achieved. Uh, It felt fantastic. Okay, Eric. uh as we take a look at, at your career, let's talk about uh, you have trained, you have worked out with Dustin Rhodes and Barry Windham. Uh, they are the unified tag team champions, but many people say, hey, these guys are not seeing eye to eye right now. Well, I try not to lessen to the outside. and all sports, people try to perceive um, things, and they all perceive them differently. Uh, I worked out with Dustin. I worked out with Barry, and I know how they are. And um, exactly. when you get in the heat of, all, of a moment, the heat of a battle, you say things, like do that things that you might not normally I've say. I know what they both want. They both want to win. They both want to be the best tag team uh, wrestlers ever. They want to carry the belts proud, and they have one goal in mind, and that's to beat anyone that comes their way. For you, and uh, if you take a look at all the athletes uh, in the United States, probably the most demanding schedule is that of a pro wrestler. How are you handling that right now? Well, it's different. Uh, It's a totally different discipline. In uh, football, I had a week off if I had any injuries. You had a week to get ready for your opponents. Here, if you get banged up, you're wrestling every night. You're going through airports, hotels, rental cars, trying to get in four or five meals a day, trying to get in your workouts, and you're trying to think about your opponent for that night. You can't think about your wins and losses or celebrate them you got to think about that opponent just the next day it's totally different but uh with a good discipline good routine you can do it well they, they say in sports attitude is half the battle so you're halfway there continue good luck to you eric thank you very much okay eric watts on wcw up close uh, what did you think about this crockett i got a lot of thoughts i think it was okay i, I the thing is to me like right off the bat he is supposed to be a baby face, but he's got like this like resting dick face. Yeah. Where he is just like, like, look at him, look face. at him from the beginning. Just looking, looking like. Yeah. Just upset for no particular reason. I mean, the, the messaging is good, a little bland in the delivery, but I, I like the whole package overall. 
Hopper, your thoughts? Dude, that shirt, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Frank that's a Kramer, Kenny, Kramer special. That's a Kenny's Key West special right there. <laughs> yeah, for real. It, it, it's like you can't see his body. It's like he's sticking his head out of something. <laughs> Oh man! It's like we're in the like the the Missy Elliott trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> no shape to it whatsoever. And, and that pattern looks like the pattern in, in like a uh, the floor of a Chuck E. Cheese or something. <laughs> it's because I was gonna say like a casino rug, yeah. Right. <laughs> and they like that to to, uh, to hide stains. Right. Yeah. It, it, that's what his shirt looks like. Yeah. You can't see his arms. What the yeah. fuck, bro? <laughs> Man, I think the intent here is good. Like they try to tell the backstory about his athletic background, and like that's that's not that's a shoot. He is he was a D one QB You're playing right. against Ohio State, Florida State. Like he he played in some big time. Like he played big time college football in big time games. Like, so it it's legit. I mean, he's an athlete, man. Like the thing that I feel bad for him here is it is too much. Like you can't, I get that he was a, like a really good, you know, he's a legitimate D one athlete, but man, he doesn't come off the right way in that promo. And it's not, again, I don't, it's not his fault because they set him up for failure by trying to give him too much too soon. Yeah. Like we didn't, I think it's we better just see. to put him at the underneath matches just instead of building him up. Cause then yeah, yeah. They just, the resentment builds, not a, you know, the locker room and just the people watching like this is the boss's son. If they just put them out, put them out there in underneath matches, winning some, losing some, and kind of naturally progress, that probably he wouldn't have had as much backlash as he did. Yeah, in according to Arn, from what he said on his show, and I reference Arn all, a lot because I've listened. You know, he was there during his era, and he's been pretty vocal. He didn't like to from the way he says it. He didn't like say that guys took it out on Watts. Uh, Eric Watts, that is, but th- they definitely were not happy based on, you know, watching this happen in front of their face. And, you know, you got guys take get, getting asked to take pay cuts and this and that. And then, you know, here's daddy's daddy's boy, you know, getting the hookup. It's like, hey, what the hell, dude? You know, like that's kind of like that the attitude that you know, permeated through the, the dressing room. So Arn specifically said, he was like, I didn't take it out on Watts, but you know, there were a lot of guys who were not happy whatsoever. And, and I, I think, I think Eric Watts needed to be coached here. Like he needed, I mean, y'all nailed it the way he's just sitting and he's got this yeah. mean mug on his face. It doesn't exude baby face ready to take on all comers at they all. should have brought him in how they did Marcus Bagwell. It's all, uh, yes, Any, sir, and uh, Mr. Yeah. Ross, and, and, you know, I'm glad to be here. I got to prove what I'm worth. Even when they, okay, even when, du- if you remember when Dustin first came in, Dustin was not, like, given, like, a push or nothing like that. He just was a guy. It's been years now. Well, he went away, came back, but it's been years now. It was years before Dustin like won a major title on TBS. So you just and I'm not saying, you know, Eric's going to have a major title tomorrow, but it's just it just doesn't come off good the way they position him. Um and it gets worse because he's just he's just beating people. Um he had a bunch of ma- he was training like obviously at the the training facility and like his first handful of matches were with uh uh uh, Buddy Lee Parker. Uh, he was working with Canterbury right there. So like he had, he had like numerous matches with them on like the house shows and stuff, but man, he's like basically put on TV, just 
not that many matches in from what I can see from the records. And I don't know, man, it's, it sucks. Cause he, he was really put in a position to fail. Like you just don't do that to somebody. Yeah. I mean, this is the second largest promotion at that point. Right. And you're just going to just put this guy on TV just to fall flat on his face. Come on, man. He doesn't have the charisma at this point. Like, it's just, why would you do this to your kid? Oh, because you're the almighty Bill Watts. Like, I blame Watts more than any, Bill more than anything. It certainly had nothing to do with Eric. No, yeah. It's just the the push, the nature of the push, and how they're kind of introducing him is what's kind of burying him. Yeah. But we continue. Uh, we then, after that, we go to a Cactus Jack, pro, well, not promo, but Cactus Jack is interviewing Jake Roberts. Um, Jake... <laughs> <laughs> JR is afraid of snakes in this promo. Let me get to it, but Crockett, give me some cover. Do you have anything from this before I hit play? No, this is Jake's like third promo on the show. <laughs> They're really getting their money's worth before he <laughs> right. he skedaddles. But uh get your shit in yeah. while he's still here and he's fucking walking. So yeah, the whole show there, Jim Ross is like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll interview Jake, but if he's got the snake, uh, I won't be there. So he, he was teasing that all show. And then he, he's later, he says, oh, I found out that he's bringing the snake. So I won't be doing the interview. He can interview himself. And then so Cactus here, ends up doing the interview. So here it is. My guest, Jake, the snake Roberts and Jake, I guess we ought to thank our gutless host, Jim Ross. You see, he's a little bit afraid of your albina cobra. And rightfully so, Cactus. Oh, that's right, Jake. We all are, myself included, but it's all right. You see, you understand me. We're tight, and I trust you. But, Jake, let's talk about Halloween Havoc. Let's talk about the wheel. All those great matches, Jake, but the one that's got me intrigued right there, Spinner's Choice. Spinner's Choice. That means anything that I can come up with in this evil mind of mine, that's exactly what it's going to be. But you look at everything else up there, Cactus. You look at First Blood, you look at the coal miner's glove. Texas death match. Prince of Darkness. Texas bull rope. Russian chain match. Dog collar, I quit. Now that would really be nice to hear Sting say, I quit. I like to hear those words. That would be a really nice thing. Any one of those matches, Sting, can finish your career. But let me tell you something. If it comes down to Spinner's Choice, <laughs> you can bet your life that you're going to see something like this. Maybe something a little bigger. Maybe something a little wilder. But yes. You will see this snake, and you and I both know when you play with snakes, sooner or later, you're going to get bitten. Yes, you will be bitten, Sting. Jake, let me spin the wheel. You spin the wheel, brother, you make the deal. I want to make a deal. <laughs> Oh, baby, oh. There we go. Fans, let's go back up to Rhubarb Jones. My gosh. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the snake, yes, Hopper, the snake pulled the foam off of the microphone. That was a good visual. Yeah, Cactus it, fed the mic to the, <laughs> to the snake, and the snake... Uh, dude. The spot. The whole time that's going on, I am watching Cactus get way too close to that snake. Bruh, for real. It's going to make I... me faint because he like, he don't give a fuck. Look, look, it's a python from fucking Petco. <laughs> right. Look how close he is. Yeah. He's like all up on it. And every now and then Cactus like looks at it and, and is like, okay, am I too close? But... The whole time I'm thinking, dude, that snake's a shoot, bro. <laughs> the snake don't. The snake ain't in on the work. And he, he's gnawing. He's gnawing on Jake's glove the entire time he's holding. <laughs> like he could just reach out and gnaw on Cactus's hand just as easy. Right. <laughs> it's just, it just reminds me of like shoot interviews that I've heard where they talk about when the when. <laughs> 
you ever see I think they showed it recently again on A and E biography when they were talking about Jake and, and Savage and how Savage was like, Oh no, brother, you're gonna hold on, you're gonna make the you gonna let the snake bite you first. And he like <laughs> he like he like made Jake he like made the snake bite Jake first in the back to make sure it didn't have venom in it. <laughs> and then they get out there and the snake latches on to Randy's arm, right? And and all the guys are talking that they're interviewing are like, bro, that snake ain't in on it. The snake don't realize it's not a work, so a snake's not letting go. And so that's what I'm thinking right here. A little bit different because they're not in the middle of a match, but still, I'm like, Cactus, your arm is kind of close to that goddamn snake. You want to step back a little bit? Like, I'm I'm with JR. I ain't mess. Dude, there's a lot of stupid stuff I did when it came to wrestling. Dealing with live animals was not one of them. Yeah, fuck that. Because that animal does not know <laughs> this is a work. It was like, Harper, remember on Smoky Mountain Wrestling when the Steiners came in with Arnold the Pitbull? Yeah. And the, and the Pitbull charges after Dr. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hell, no. I love dogs. But I'm like, hell no. That dog is not in on the work. Uh-uh. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, oh, man, mildly entertaining, but still, it was a good visual though. That I wonder where they got those snakes from. They had to get them from like a a fucking handler, huh? Hey, I don't know yeah. if he traveled with it, right? I don't know right, if it's his or yeah, or if he. Well, Jake, Jake traveled with it in WWF. He said, because he tells that story about how the British Bulldogs would like throw like cigarette butts in there with the snake, you yeah. know, that was still hot and like to piss the snake off. And Jake pulled the rib. <laughs> Jake pulled the rib on the British Bulldogs one night. Cause they had Matilda. Matilda <laughs> this is so foul. Matilda's in the hotel room and Jake loads Matilda up with like chili dogs. <laughs> <laughs> And the dog, it gave the dog like ridiculous <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> and Jake is in the room, like right next door. And the bulldog, the, the British bulldogs come back from like a night of drinking. <laughs> they walk in, and Jake's awake. And Jake can hear like Davy Boy, the like, what the fuck, the fucking dog, shit. the fucking dog shit all over the place, man. The fucking dog, like. And and Jake claims like he's like he could hear the dog yelping because the dog's got a poo and the dog just <laughs> sprayed diarrhea all over the walls of the hotel. <laughs> like so <laughs> and I say that because Jake had the snake in the bag and that's why he that was his way of getting back at the bulldogs for pissing off his snake and throwing the cigarette butts in the bag. Um yeah, he he kinda screwed over Matilda with chili dogs. That's foul. Anyway, uh, all right. Um, any other thoughts on Jake and the snake there and cactus? Oh, uh, well, they're still putting over the spinner's choice. So it's going to be, that's probably what's going to come up in Halloween Havoc. I imagine. Mm, spinner's choice. The yeah. spinner yeah. choice awards brought to you by <laughs> Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. The next match we go to is DDP and Vinny Vegas, the Vegas connection versus uh gary jackson and joey mags and G- gary jackson is half pints height um hopper look at it i want you to see this dude look at him on the ring apron not joey mags who's in the ring look how short he is he's leaning up against the top yeah. so it's tippy toes. Short, he's on his tippy toes that's a short fella Anyway, what's wrong? Nothing. Oh, I th- oh, he is oh. short, man. Well, Deep State Harper just entered the chat. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Uh, Crockett, uh, thoughts on this match? Here they go with the arm again. <laughs> Fuck. Jesus Christ. Pay attention. <laughs> Still <laughs> with the arm. You saw <laughs> 10 straight minutes of it with... Uh, Z Man, holy shit! Um, so yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, it's a little moment here at at fifty one thirty eight. 
I want to get your opinion on this is a little awkwardness when uh, the Van Man goes to tag out. Yeah, what <laughs> was that like, about? It must be like even back then, DDP must have been uh, scripting all of his matches move for move on a on a notebook. Right. He's like, no, this isn't where you yeah. tag out, bro. Right, it's not here yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then he makes a tag, and Nick Patrick's like, no, not yet. Oh, that was weird. Yeah, because yeah, he, he tagged him from the apron. You're supposed to be in the ring to make the tag. So. Oh, you see, look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like it was like DDP wanted him to – you saw what happened? When he did make the tag, it was because the guy was draped over the top rope, and it was like DDP wanted him in that position when he got tagged in so he could do that sweet new move right there that he's about to do. Yeah. Yeah. I just learned this one last week. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Do you know DDP and Eric Watts are like good friends? Right now? Yeah. Like to this day. Well, good for them. I think uh I think that the fuck that's you his daughter's do about it. <laughs> nothing. I think that's his daughter's like uh godfather. Oh, well. Yeah. All right. You probably get some season uh, season tickets to the uh Louisville Cardinal games. His daughter is a Eric Watts's daughter plays for Navy basketball. Oh wow! Well, yeah. there you go. Oh, she's in her second year. She's a D one athlete herself. So, all right, uh, Crockett. Any other thoughts on this match? No, I mean it was it was a match, but they they said uh, as they were going uh, to the finish. They said they were going to do a promo, and that was the most excited I've been this entire episode. <laughs> going to hear from Vinny Vegas, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, let's go to it. It's uh, coming up right here. Uh, just listen Charlie to Charlie Ranchers. <laughs> just listen to DDP here too. Here's the promo with DDP and Vinny Vegas. Tomorrow night here on the TBS on the main event, it's going to be Diamond Dallas Page one on one with one of the leading contenders for Rookie of the Year honors, Marcus oh. Alexander Bagwell. Well, let me tell you something, Jr. There is a lot of talk here in WCW about Marcus Alexander Bagwell being the rookie of the year. I don't get it. You get it, Benny? Nothing. He got nothing. He's a punk kid. Don't know nothing. I'll tell you what. I'm even going to give him a little bit. I'm going to say, yeah, you've come a long way, Bagwell. But if there's a rookie of the year, you're looking at him right here. Six foot five, 254 pounds of chiseled stone and B-A-double-D. Good God, bad to the bone. I'm the rookie of the year. Right, Ben Man? Absolutely, Jim. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that match up tomorrow in the main event, 6.05 Eastern time, and we'll have more on WC. Okay. Uh, Crockett thoughts? Like it says, right, Ben Man? And he responds, absolutely, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Oh boy, I I don't hate the the combo of them, but uh, that might not be their best promo work. No. Uh, you notice Vinny Vegas's like that accent is kind of fading a little. It's not as good as it once was. This is I guess Thank the word God. I'm looking for. <laughs> was yeah. it good ever? I, I mean, it was abs- it was absurd. I don't know if I don't want to call it good, but it was absurd. How's that sound? Yeah, it's still pretty absurd to me. <laughs> All right. Any thoughts after that? They do have a Cactus Jack promo. Did you have anything from this, Crockett? No. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Rude is Rude is going to battle Simmons almost nightly before Havoc, and then, um. So Cactus is kind of talking about you know him and Rude being best friends, and Cactus says that you know he's softening up Simmons for Barbarian. With, with what's going to happen, like basically just kind of leading up to, I don't know, just kind of trying to make it sound like everything that Simmons is going through right now is just, is going to help out Barbarian leading up to Halloween Havoc. It's kind of a weird promo. Uh, if it didn't make sense what I said, that's because it's like very weird. At the end, JR says Cactus is also advising Tony Atlas. So there's that. From there, we go to a match with Tony Atlas and the Barbarian versus Jeff Daniels and T.A. McCoy. Jeff Daniels, if you listen to our Smoky Mountain Wrestling podcast, he was the guy who Kevin Sullivan hit in the back of the head with a wooden chair and split 
his ass wide oh, open. Oh, I remember you. Yeah. Kevin Sullivan hit him with a wooden chair and clocked the shit out of him and opened him up. Like, it wasn't that he was bleeding terrible, but he had a gash in the back of his head from this wooden chair. So that is Jeff That is Jeff Daniels. And every time I see Jeff Daniels, I always make a note of it whenever uh, he's on our TV and he's anything we're reviewing. Uh, Crockett, I'll throw to you anything from this. So uh, Bill Watts lost uh, Butch Reed, and he said... Give me another black guy. Yeah. And uh, there's Tony Atlas. I just understand. Barbarian's going for your top singles title, and he's in a random tag team match on this show. Why Why is it Tony Atlas, first of all? And why is he in this tag match when he is going for the richest prize in the game in a couple weeks of Halloween Havoc? I don't understand it. Whoa. It's like they're just filling time at this point. I guess he picked Tony Atlas because he answered the phone. <laughs> but it is kind of what he did. Like he was like, "All right, Butch Reed, uh, I need another black guy." Like this had to be right after he did that uh, that uh, African gimmick. Uh, that was WWE. that was ninety one, I think. Yeah. yeah. He uh, he did that for a while, then went back to the independents. Did a. Uh, IWCCW in the Northeast with the Savoldis, and then he ended up back here. Crockett, you've done shows with Atlas, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tony Atlas. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, we've talked about the Subway story a, a number of times, I think, on the podcast. Subway story. The I love the story <laughs> that Brian Fury would tell when they were at Subway. <laughs> And Tony Atlas is leaning over the the, the subway case and he's kind of, you know, watching the the sandwich being made and he's not really saying nothing. And Fury says that Atlas is looking down at the girl's feet making the sandwich and he goes, oh, my God, oh, hold on. And and Tony Atlas goes six. And she's like, excuse me. <laughs> and Atlas goes size six. Like he could just look at a woman's feet and she and he immediately knows the size. Jesus Christ. Yeah. She's like, yes. Yes, that's correct. Six. Oh. <laughs> Here's Did you your work freak. at Footlocker? No. Uh, I, uh, I hear Tony's a really nice guy. Like I for yeah. everybody who who I know that's worked with him before and met him. He's like a really good dude. Oh, yeah, it just man. has some procl- proclivities. He's yeah. just got some weird stuff, dude. Anytime you don't mind when somebody takes the sole of their shoe and puts it on your face, that's odd. I don't get it, bro. <laughs> I just don't get it. Hopper, t- go off on your tirade like you did before. Yeah, One me. day, Hopper's talking about the foot thing. He's like, bro, I don't understand the foot thing. No. I mean... And I was like, well, Hopper, but you eat ass. You know, circle, circle, dot, dot. He goes, yeah, but she's not dragging her asshole across the floor at Winn-Dixie. <laughs> yeah, bro. I mean, you can't fuck a foot, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A foot's a foot, bro. Though we try. Yeah, God. I mean, what the fuck you going to do with it? <laughs> oh, look at those toes. What the fuck? <laughs> Never heard of the foot job? Yeah, but I mean, I've heard of the fucking too. <laughs> <laughs> there was a new listener of the week if they made it this far in. Because I uh, mean, that's what the vagina's there for. I mean, they don't fucking walk in their fucking vaginas. They don't do like a split, <laughs> like crawling around the floor. Jesus. All right. Uh, Tony a snail trail. A snail trail. <laughs> yeah, like like Sonny did on uh, Tommy Noe's dining room table. Uh, 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 remember, remember, remember when we had that discussion during during the SMW uh, shows? That's, <laughs> come on, <laughs> Sonny was sitting on his in his uh in his living room or dining room, sitting on a table. He's like, "Yeah, we still got that dining room table. the The dining room looks just like that to this day." I'm like, "Okay." Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, Atlas and Barbarian win. Atlas put Daniels in a full Nelson and Atlas uh, Barbarian, like I said, just get the win. From there, here it goes, Crockett. I know you got some thoughts on this. We go to Steve Austin and Brian Pillman. 
versus Dustin Rhodes and Brad Armstrong. So it's main event time. Dustin comes out without Barry. Armstrong is his partner. Dustin has both tag belts. JR says, I don't know what the deal is, but Wyndham isn't here. Maybe he got caught up and had transportation issues. And the reason I pointed earlier to Barry kind of looking at Dustin accepting the challenge, it kind of leads into the story here where Barry's not here. And is it because he's mad? What's the deal? Anyway, uh, we'll get to Barry in a second when we get to the finish. But guys, with um, Dustin and Wyndham, and you can kind of hear Wyndham kind of giving Dustin an earful about accepting that challenge when he's kind of like he's the veteran of the team or whatnot. So they they kind of seek they kind of snuck in the fact that uh, Barry is pissed off. You don't if you're not paying attention, you don't know what the hell's going on. And you watch right. the end of this sh- match, and you kind of still won't know what the hell's going on. That was really weird. How during the Eric Watts segment they showed that clip. He was talking about Barry in that clip, but it was really weird how they showed Barry. You know, telling him at that point, you know, hey, what are you doing? Just accepting challenges like that. Like it was a weird place to put it. Like the, all they had to do was put it in there earlier. They didn't, we didn't need to see it right there. But yeah, they, so they did try to clarify, but you really had to be paying close attention. And I don't know. It just was weird. weird oh, here we go. Stop. Pause. Oh, God. Hold up. Hold up. Hold go up. Back. Go back. Jesus Christ. Go back, Mike. I'm coming. It's it's. I, I rewind it. Holy shit! The rat back. Oh my god. Okay. The top looks like the cast of Designing Women, <laughs> and then the, the bottom looks like Good Times. <laughs> He's not Seven, wrong. That's just a bookman down there in the bottom. Yeah, the bottom for real, right. bro. <laughs> He's, He's not wrong. The first thing I thought when I saw the woman at the top right was, she looks like Della Burke. Dude, she's a big fucking bra too, bro. Jesus. And she's got those shoulder pads. She, she fucking look, she's like Vader. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Brian Erlacher. No, one of the <laughs> fucking road warriors, bro. Look how big those shoulder pads are. I see them. It's hard to miss. Covering big Vader shoulders. Bar- they're probably made by Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't make a note. Was Jr. saying something when they showed them on commentary? I don't think so. And that chick on the fucking left looks like a uh, a prostitute, Mrs. Garrett from uh, Facts of Life. Wow. <laughs> Doesn't she? I'm about to get back to it. At least I was trying to get back to it. Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> like a younger version, like she's yeah. working oh, the streets blair. or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Joe. Uh, Tootie's go sitting in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting group, man. Dude, for real, bro. And, and, and I mean, the one like in the middle, just I mean, she's like Kenny Key West, bona fide. All the way live right there. The middle <laughs> one, bro? Yeah. She's straight, dude. And you know they're waiting by the dressing room door after the uh, oh, show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm trying. I, on the right, want... she's going to have to wait in the fucking car. <laughs> Every time they go to a scene like this, though, it's always they're there with somebody, even if they don't say it. Because, like, f- a few months back, they were shooting JR's kids or whatever i'm just saying they might not say who they are but the reason the cameraman is doing that is for a reason he didn't just randomly find these three women with enough aquanet in their hair to you know blaze up the superdome and set it on fire these they they, they, that is not a random shot that one on the right dude she's huge (laughs) You'd hit you 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 you'd still uh spit no, the game at it. Yeah, you, you would. Dude. Yeah, you no. would. Get she enough- was like an offensive lineman for like for like uh the, the Wisconsin or something. 
Oh, come on, Harper. If I, if I got enough, uh, what's that, rolling rock in you, you no, would be like, no hey, way, baby, bro. what's going on, girl? Negative. She probably, maybe. She probably, she probably <laughs> played with Eric Watts. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> she was yeah, we, one thing we didn't say, Eric and Watts is a big old. In the low high Eric Watts is a big old boy. He's like six foot six. Yeah, well. He, well, you know, legit athlete that too. Chick could 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 give him a, a fucking run for his money. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, let's 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 go to let's go to the match. Let me go to you. Did, what do you have, Crockett, from this thing? I have uh, that they go and start working the motherfucking arm again. Just the entire show, just working the arm. <laughs> Cut the head shit. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, oh, and by the way, there's something else that bugged me this whole show, too. Every time they hit the ropes, the ropes creaked. There was like a, a squeak, a creak, creaking, sounded like, you know, the Tin Man in the Wood Forest. Uh, every <laughs> time they hit the fucking ropes. That annoyed those, me as well. Think those cables weren't uh, tight enough underneath the ring? Perhaps something like that. It was just fucking terrible. It sounded awful. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, Austin, just amazing for, he's probably like three years in at this point. Um, but I mean, it was a well worked match. Um, the Hollywood blondes weren't the blondes yet, but, uh, they, they'd get there. Um, yeah. I, I guess we can go to the finish from there. They're still, do you know the odd part? They're still not going to be the blondes for like the actual Hollywood blondes for a while. Like this is October. It's like well in the January, maybe like, like they start like officially putting them together in like January, but they, they don't become like the blondes until like maybe February where like they officially use the name. Like, I don't remember that name. Like they were tagging for a little while before they actually went with that name. This is very, yeah, they finally very bought the gear and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So like they're like people, if just in a, in a snapshot, like if you're watching this right now, you're like, all right, well, here it comes Pillman and Austin. Nah, not quite. Like it, it's, it's not quite matter of fact, it's going to be Pillman tagging with Barry for like a little bit. It's, it's so, very <laughs> odd. It's very odd what they, what they That's do. Weird. Dude, they, I'm telling you, man, every, as I rewatch this, and then once you realize, once you remember how it plays out, they, dude, they were calling audible, they had to be calling audibles like nonstop, just nonstop audibles because of all the shenanigans going on backstage and people being mad at Watts and, you know, and this one leaving and all this stuff, it, they had to be. So anyway, I'll go to the finish now. There's a hot tag to Armstrong, and the crowd is going pretty crazy as Brad is just in there wheeling and dealing. Brad looked great. Yeah. Uh, Wyndham, Wyndham comes out, and he starts arguing with Dustin. And then they start slapping the hell out of each other on the outside as they have a few words. Um, meanwhile, as they're arguing on the outside, Dustin and, and, and Barry – there they go. They slapped each other. If you're watching on uh, Patreon, tinyurl.com slash Patreon BC. Armstrong is in there and he's just getting lit up in the ring. Dustin finally gets in the ring and helps Armstrong. Wyndham then gets in the ring to help battle Austin and Pillman. Very odd situation. They just won the belts, but Wyndham isn't happy. So stay tuned, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. We've kind of talked about the problems and what's going on here. But if this is, you know, the crowd's into it, but. The, there's no continuity here, and it's all because of the exits that have left the building. Um, and that was my thoughts, but uh, I kind of mentioned that earlier. Crockett, any other thoughts on the finish? Yeah, like I said earlier, if you weren't paying attention, like I didn't notice the first time that um, that clip was that was playing during Eric's uh, Eric Watts's deal, but this is just zero to a hundred. All of a sudden, Wyndham comes out, rips. Dustin off the apron by the trunks. As Dustin pushes him, he slaps uh, Dustin. It's like, what the? What has gotten into this guy? These guys just won the tag team titles seven days ago on TV, and just let it fucking breathe for a second. But crying out loud, they couldn't let it breathe because they didn't know what the hell they were doing. Yeah, I, yeah, they're just scrambling. And that's the other part. If Barry Wyndham and Dustin 
Rhodes are baby faces. Why would Barry get so upset that Dustin accepted the challenge? You're right. a baby face. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. It was just way too much. Let's cover our asses. We're messing this up. So we got to do something. It's just really just odd. But it is what it is at this point. So I'm with you. I'm with both of y'all. Um, that's how they go off air at that point. They, um, you know, stay tuned. We'll see what happens. But it definitely looks like there's trouble in paradise between the just newly crowned as of seven days ago, NWA and WCW World Tag Team Champions. On that note, we need to rate it, hand out the Rolex. Before we do so, I want to remind you, the only way to get access to our Halloween Havoc pay-per-view review is by going to Patreon at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. That is tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Not only will you get Halloween Havoc, but you'll get all of our Patreon shows. Uh, All of the WCW pay-per-views, Clash of the Champions, NWA Power shows with Sparks and the Little Fella, ECW shows with uh, Mike Pru, JV, and Rick Beebe, all available on Patreon, tinyurl.com, slash Patreon, BTT. Um, Crockett, you know the drill. Uh, You're the guest, so I'm going to throw it to you to rate it first. What are you giving this one? Man, I I mean, Jesus. I'm just sad that I missed the the Sting match because the preemption because (sighs) guaranteed there was no arm bar in the Sting match. Um, (laughs) Fuck. uh, C. I'll give it a C. (laughs) Crockett has cursed more in this episode than I think any other episode I've ever done with him. He is pissed off about all of the arm bars and the lack of continuity in the booking. (laughs) Jesus Uh, Christ. We got Pillman who turned on a dime like two or three weeks ago. Now he's a dastardly cheating heel. Now Barry Windham comes out of nowhere and starts tearing things apart. What What is going on? I'm going to give it a C. Uh, C plus. Let me, let me give it a C plus. A Harper, C what do you... plus. Fuck that. A C. All right. Ooh, Dang, I'm the sorry. lucky they got that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then this is the tough one. Who gets the Rolex? Jake Crockett? Snake. <laughs> Jake Snake. Are we talking about his legitimate reptile or oh, his oh. what? what? Grow up. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is why we don't have sponsors, and this is why we run off new listeners. Okay, so Jake's. Are you serious, Hopper? Are you gonna give it to Jake Snake? I, I have fuck it, man. Give it to his snake. Okay. His snake bit off the fucking foam thing off the mic. <laughs> that was a great visual. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, Crockett. Who are you giving yours to? Jesus Christ, I'm trying to scan here and find something. Um, <laughs> I'll give it to Vinny Vegas. Why not? All right. Um, you, know who worked, you know who worked a good match? Brad Armstrong. I'm going to give it to Brad because poor Brad was just thrown into this bull crap. <laughs> Like, you think about Brad. Brad's in the back. He's like, uh, and Watts is trying to figure out what he's doing. Oh, well, you know, we're just going to, well, we're going to turn Barry. Uh, we'll, we'll, Dustin, I, I need a tag partner then. Well, what are we doing? Uh, Brad, uh, you worked for me in Mid South. Uh, go out there and, um, yeah, and uh, go do your thing. Okay. And you know, Brad ain't going to Right. Yeah, well, don't <laughs> Brad. Worry. Brad ain't going to argue. He's okay, brother, whatever you want me to do, I'm getting my paycheck. I mean, you know, he's yeah. that's it. That's all. That's how it went down. Pretty crazy. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to give mine to Brad Armstrong. On that note, uh, Crockett, uh, thanks for joining us for the last two weeks. We appreciate you filling in. Uh, Doc won't be here next week. At least we don't think so at this time. So um, I wanted you to do next week, but I guess we'll have to see if we can get another fill-in or maybe we'll uh That's we'll great. So, uh, so – so, like, everyone can just come and go when they please? No, not, not everyone. This is, like, 1993 WCW. <laughs> I'm going to just... I'm going to fucking Japan. <laughs> Are you? Are yeah. you really now? Are you now? <laughs> yeah, me and Doc. Oh, God, that ought to be great. <laughs> that ought to be real good. I'd love to see that, but... Crockett, what do you got to plug before you get out of here and ride off into the sunset? Oh, uh, nothing. There's nothing going on. That's <laughs> all. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, we 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 are still gonna do Beach Brawl. Uh, when we yeah, yeah. I got some new information too, uh, thanks to um, the Dark Side of the Ring podcast that they're doing. They did just did a Herb Abrams episode, and there's some new stuff, some new uh, details about certain things. So kind of funny. So we do need to get that scheduled to do. That'll be on Patreon, tinyurl.com slash Patreon, BTT. Uh, Crockett and I, we talked about it when we did, Crockett and I revisited the Herb Abrams episode of Dark Side of the Ring. So we said that we would definitely uh, do Beach Brawl and what was the other one? Blackjack Brawl. Black, black, what was it? What? Yeah, I, yeah, one of them was a pay-per-view and one of them was just a show. Oh. That they had in in Vegas at the MGM Grand in front of six hundred people. Oh God, bro! Yeah, oh God is right. So we are going to be reviewing that on Patreon as soon as we can get that scheduled. I know Crockett's got a little time away with his family coming up and whatnot, so oh. we'll see when we can get it done. But uh, that ought to be fun. We we talked about Damn it a few weeks the ago, fucking we'll year. It. Great. He's like he's like Doc. He's like Doc. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> is he? Doc. What, what is what's Doc doing now? Is he? currently drunk uh, i don't know he's messaging harper and i this whole show i had to silence my phone because it wouldn't stop going off and i'm like dude don't you have a family you're on vacation with why don't you go spend <laughs> some time with him jesus christ i mean fuck drive me up a wall he was dming me all day i'm like dude you know i'm working you're on vacation go 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 make memories as harper likes to say <laughs> i mean let me tell you something. Having reading glasses has changed, has completely now has made my phone even more of an irritant than it used to be. Oh, because now I got to put the reading glasses on to see the fucking phone. And, <laughs> if, and if you're trying to watch something on TV, that is just one more obstacle that gets in the way of looking down at your phone. <laughs> oh, can't you man. Just make it bigger. Bruh. Eyes can't focus on something right in front of you. Get you get yourself a see? jitterbug. A jitterbug. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Crockett. I'm not that old. Uh, but anyway, I think we're going to get out of here now. What a show. What a bad episode of Saturday Night. Ugh. This one was nauseatingly bad at times. Uh, thanks to nothing but arm bars. But uh, Crockett, thanks again for the last two weeks. We'll be in touch. Hopper, if you don't have anything, hit the tagline. Let's roll. Book it, biatch.